Wow, we have a great day planned ahead. We plan on building a high banker. So we're gonna take our two sluice boxes. This is a two inch dredge sluice box and this is just a standard 36 inch keen sluice box. And we're gonna take some um, material that we have lying around. We have some um, angle, one uh, three quarter inch uh, aluminum angle and some plastic sheeting and some um, scrap uh, bolts that we have left over from our gutter job and we're gonna build a high banger today. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe now and leave your comments below. When we started this project today, we made a small sketch of what we plan on doing. This is our 36 inch Keen sluice box that we already have, and this is the high banker on top that we plan on mounting on it. It's gonna be 10 inches wide, which is the same as the Keen sluice box. It's gonna have a spray bar in the middle, grizzlies on the top, and, um, classifying rods on the bottom. So the material will be fed in here, get washed real thoroughly, it will fall, there'll be a secondary spray bar in the middle, and then all the small material will go through these classifying rods and the big rocks will fall at the end. The top of the high banker is basically a box. So we, we, we cut four 10 inch wide by 36 inch pieces of plastic and we're gonna bolt together a channel using the angle, aluminum angle like this. And the other side will be the same. The next step is to cut out the classifying area on the top header box. So I, I, I made a layout drawing on, on top of the um, piece that we're using. Now this is some plastic sheeting that we had just scrap laying around, but you could use wood or uh, ideally thin stainless steel um, sheet metal would be the best material to use. There are nine cutouts on this pattern. So once I cut it out, I'm gonna try just breaking these off. Let's try it now. And obviously this probably isn't strong enough, so we might have to put a reinforcing rod behind this assembly once we install it. But the rocks and gravel are gonna flow here, which will be a slurry from the water and it'll go over these grizzly bars and the gold and the uh, smaller material is gonna go through the classifier and all the rest of the excess rocks are gonna go through. We're gonna use pop rivets to uh, assemble the channel. So I've, I've laid my angle in here and we just drill out the hole for the pop rivet.
going to end up using threaded rod instead of um, the original bolts that we thought we would because we need them 12 inches long. Now Mike's going to assemble the grizzly bars using 516's, 18's brass nuts and um, the threaded rod. A little bit of Loctite as well. And he's going to use Loctite to make sure it doesn't fall apart in the field. We were originally planning on using these gutter bolts for the grizzly bars, but as you can see they weren't long enough. They were about half of what we needed. So we just decided to uh, use some threaded rod. This is 516's, 18, but you could really use anything that you have laying around. We just cut the threaded rod to 12 inches and then we cut two pieces of that angle we've been using for the whole assembly and we bolted it all together. Now I'm going to rivet these two pieces on the end and then we're going to hinge it where it goes up and down on the um, header box. We got the uh, header box about 90% complete. We got the grizzly section done. I'm sorry, the grizzly bars done. We got the classifying section done. Um, the, what's, what's left is to mount the spray bars. So we were thinking of a more of this angle, aluminum angle mounted to the sides and aluminum angle going across and then just mounting the spray bar on top of that. Um, we have to make enough clearance here for the spray bar for the Grizzlies. So I'm thinking about this height I'm showing at, right in the middle. So we built a small frame to hold up the spray bar. We're gonna mount the spray bar about this height here, four and a half inches off the top. We're gonna spray the water when, when the machine is in action, it'll spray all the rocks you put in here and then you'll open it up and rocks that go underneath the spray bar. So the majority of the water coming from the spray bar will come out this end and it'll blast that back and wash all the rocks that are uh, uh, sitting on top of the grizzlies. But we're going to add an extra spray bar hole that's spraying the, the loose material coming through that's going down the um, header box.
We're going to just install a 440 screw with a lock nut to make the uh, grizzly bars not want to rotate when you throw rocks in there. I'll show you in a minute once I get it up here. So we just put a hole in a... So now when rocks hit it here, it doesn't want to rotate and then you can rotate the... So in operation, it would be like this, rocks won't rotate it. And then when you go like this and the rocks will fall through. Okay, so in operation, you want to have enough angle on this header box where the material flows easily out when you open these grizzly bars. So it's kind of a, something you adjust in the field. And then at the same time, you also want enough angle on your sluice box that your sluice box doesn't overflow with material. So those are two adjustments that you have to do in the field. So we're gonna add these bars on top right here. And that should give us, an, we're gonna add extra holes and that should give us enough, enough, enough adjustment in the field um, to get what we want. So for the uh, high baker stand, we just went to Home Depot and grabbed a $5 pressure treated two by four and we cut it up into um, smaller pieces and then we built a small frame to hold it up. So a sluice box typically wants one to two inches of drop per foot. Since we have a three foot sluice box, um, we have about uh, four inches of drop. Um, so we're right in that range. I can't wait to try this thing out. I'm really excited. This came out great. Uh, we just pulled this design out of our head, um, you know, by just looking at other uh, other high bankers out there. But you know, we just used raw material that we had uh, on hand. Uh, we had all the material. The only thing we bought was this PVC pipe, this fitting, these clamps. We spent twenty five dollars at Home Depot for everything. But I think you could build this exact high banker for around a hundred dollars, even if you had to buy all the material. Uh, but you know, you can always go to the local junkyard and you can get scrap metal or um, a lot of scrap plastic sheets even um, from a local source. Well, thanks a lot and um, we'll see you next time and don't forget to subscribe.